are blessed this morning. There was we have we have work to do, Pastor Steve, because there was like three people that said they're blessed this morning. How many of you are blessed this morning? Listen, it should be a reason for you to shout, Amen. Yes, I am blessed. Yes, me, pick me, pick me. Yes, I am blessed. Amen. It is our pleasure and our, our delight. This awesome woman of God. For those of you who does not know her, but for those of you, yes, can, yes, you guys all may. All right, be blessed, warriors in action. They're going to get ready for our um, celebration after this. But we are so blessed to have Pastor Siandres Black from Living the Word Ministries in the house. And if you can, if you can make her, make her feel welcome in the house with a clap. Make her... I can't understand that one for the very first time. Let's stop really quickly. Let's just, no, just stop real quick. Just stop. Yes. So we want to make Pastor Siandra's Black welcome in the house of God. Thank you. Pastor Raymond Black is preaching at um, LTW, and we told him that we would take care of her. And he said that we better because that's his woman. Amen. And he's going to be missing her, but I think he's going to be missing out right now. In the name of Jesus, yes. So we're ha so happy to have her and also her armor bearer in the house. So if we can, um, Pastor, if you and your armor bearer can please stand as we lay you this morning and give them one more hand. This sounds like a ritual. Are you guys awake this morning? Pastor. All liberty to you. Whatever you got to do to wake the people up, wake them up, all right? Pastor Siandra is Black is the executive pastor along Pastor Raymond Black III of Living the Word Ministries. She is a mother to four wonderful children and two handsome grandsons, and she is also the mother of LTW. She is the founder of Raw International Incorporated, a nonprofit organization which empowers women and men to embrace their true selves and gives the gift of authenticity received away to others from war around and within to raw. So we want to make welcome the author of War to Raw. We actually had our an amazing time yesterday at the book signing yesterday and we thank you all for your love and support um, but from we're gonna bring out your book after she is um, this book is awesome it is powerful and if you want to go to another level in your faith you need to grab a hold of that book it is sold out the first batch I see your faces but thank you Jesus next week they're all coming in so there's orders that is already coming in so go ahead and grab your copy as soon as we, after service, so we'll get it with you. But we want to make welcome this awesome woman of God, our sister, our pastor, Pastor Siandra is back. If you can come, sweetheart. the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place today. Come on, come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. The Bible says that everything that has breath, praise be the Lord. So if you have breath, come on, let's praise the Lord. I didn't say give me any praise. I said come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. If you was watching the football game, and if you was watching the basketball game, if you was watching hockey, if you were running track, or if you was about to get the lottery, they would get a little bit more praise. So come on, let's give the Lord a mighty praise in this that's right, I'm a woman with a big boy who serve a big God. And you got big voices too, That's amen. Right. Amen, you may have your seat. I just wanted to start out with a praise because how many know he inhabits the praises of his people? And that's why we're like our father. You know, this is not really the message, but that's why we as, as children, because we're our daddy's child, when we do something well, we like people to say thank you. Is that right? So if we are his children who likes, thank you, how much more our Heavenly Father, who we represent, inhabits our praise. 
So for the next time, when your pastors get up here and say, let's give God a praise, she and he don't mean pancake. Yes, right. She means give God, and they mean God, give God a mighty hand yes. clap of praise. Because yes. if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you would not be here today. Call us. Director, God, I praise you and I love you and I thank you to Pastor Jeremy and Pastor Cassie. I take it not lightly and I count it an honor to be here on this day to serve your people. See, as shepherds, we got to be careful of who we come to deliver. And so we can't see this as, oh, this is a great opportunity. We have to be in the presence of the Lord because they are responsible for the word that your sheep, you as the sheep, receive. And so I take it not lightly that you have charged me and given me the availability to be obedient to Abba to feed your sheep on today. Amen. And to my husband, as she said, who is not here, who has blessed me and allowed me to be here on today, I give God glory. Well, Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for everything that has happened thus far. We thank you for the hearts, Lord God, that were, were just ready and the soul that was just watered through worship on today. Father, I pray that every seed, every word that is planted today will move in a mighty way in the hearts of your people. Let them not see this as just another word. Let them not have itching ears, but God, open up their hearts right now, God. Bring forth their expectation in a mighty way, Father, because you have a word on high for your people because you love them and you are really, really, really ready for us as your children to do some damage control in these last and evil days. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, are y'all ready for the word of the Lord on today? So let me just tell you something about how I deliver. I'm a very interactive person. Amen? So the longer that you sit there and look at me still like you're not receiving, the longer I'm going to press until your hearts are open and ready to receive. Amen? So I just wanted to uh, do that disclosure. And I'll know if you're faking to clap your hands just to think that you're subsiding me. So not only am I a woman of God, but I am a prophet. So I just want to make you aware that we are here today. Amen? And I want you to be like, oh my God, I'm a prophet. I'm scared. The Lord has a word for all of us and he's going to build us up because Anytime you have to deliver a word, the Lord will first speak to you. Amen. Amen. And so God loves you so much. He gave me a message today that really goes in sync with the, the name of your church. And I really, really did not get into looking up the mission and the vision. I did not want to do that because I wanted this word to truly be a fresh word. Yeah. And there's one thing that God gave me. When we hear this word today, while well, you're going to participate, you're going to do something. When I say rah, I need you guys to go rah. Are y'all ready? Let's try this. Here we go. Rah! Rah! Yeah. And it's so amazing because I really didn't pay attention to the time that I would hear y'all had two lions sitting on the altar in the pulpit. And I know some of y'all are like, ah, oh, rah, what is that? How many of you know that we are lions? We are lions and we roar and our roar is supposed to, to be powerful in the earth. And so I'm going to let you know what that rah means. But God gave me a message today for faith in action. And he said that I want you to elevate and execute your faith. Elevate and execute your faith. And how do you do that? Through Ra. How do you do it? Ra. There we go. So we're going to go into the word of the Lord on this morning. And we're going to be beginning with 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Verses 1 through 3. And the word of the Lord reads as such. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus. Unto the church of the Thessalonians and God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other abounded. Now when I begin to, to look up and how many of you know that you must really be sensitive to the Lord? At first I only had elevate your faith. And as I was sitting in the office, the Lord said, I don't want them just to elevate their faith. I want the people today to elevate and execute your faith. 
And so I said, okay, God, you know, I understood elevate. And how many you know elevate means to rise to a more important level? And so God is calling faith in action because just your name, fire, alone represents something. It's faith in action. And God is calling this ministry and this church to action. But it's not action and how you've been doing it. God is calling you to another level and a greater dimension of exercising your faith in action. And he says, I'm calling faith in action today to elevate their faith. And I don't want you just to be elevated in your faith. Once you've been elevated, I need you to now go out and be an execution of that. So elevate means to rise to a more important level. And then execute means to carry it out. So whether you realize it or not, God has sent me here to give you a charge. That it's time, faith, and action not to stay at the level that you've been at. God is calling you to elevate to another level. And then when you get to that another level, he don't want you just to sit there and get fat off of what he's done. He wants you to go out and execute. That means carry it out. That means you've got to leave outside of these four walls and go carry out the action message that God is giving you. He's not elevated and promoting you for yourself. He's saying, I'm using you so that God can get the glory through you and you and I both know that each one of us have an influence of people that we can bring in the house come on put your hands together and let's bless the Lord for that word on today and so I say God you know why did you take me in, into this scripture and so here's where the Lord really really begins to deal with me because he says all right Paul was talking to the Thessalonians but he said I need you to take it back because the problem a lot of times in our faith there's something that goes with faith that I never really even saw before. And as I was preparing for the message, he began to show me what he was trying to do. So let's take it back to Luke chapter 17. In Luke chapter 17, we're gonna start at verse five. Luke chapter 17, verse five. How many of you know that Paul wrote two thirds of the New Testament? And it's so powerful because here's a man that was once persecuting the Christians that are now talking to the Christians, he's one of us. Isn't that how it is sometimes? I mean, come on, let's be real. How many of us can remember, oh my God, these Bible thumpers, these Christians, and now we're one of them? We're one of those very people, and now we're on fire, and we're like, God, they just don't get it. And God is saying, I need, I need you to remember where I brought you from. I need you to remember how I brought you through. And so I said, okay, God, what does this have to do with elevating your faith? He said, there's something that clearly was missed because I was talking in the parables. And so he took me to Luke chapter 17, verse 5 through 10, and listen to what it says. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. What did they ask him to do? Increase. Increase. So increase is a synonym to what? Elevate. Right. right? We want more of your faith. But here's the thing that's powerful. I need you to see that they asked the Lord to do this after the Lord had given them instructions. And this is what's key. Because then he said in verse 1, we've got to take it up unto the disciples. It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a milestone were hanged about his neck. And he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed. Listen to this. Take heed to yourselves. Now this is all happening before the apostles answer and ask for an increase of faith. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. I'm like, God, what does this have anything to do with faith? God says many of you are being okay with people sinning and you're afraid to rebuke them and it takes faith to walk in the rebuke. Come on, let's keep it real. We know we got some people in our family that's doing it and we won't say anything because we're afraid that if we get on them, they might get back on us. And that's why you got to make sure you have clean hands, a pure heart, so that when you're challenging someone in love, in the word, if they try to come back, you can say, well, that's not where I am today. Praise the Lord. Anybody glad you're not where you used to be? But here's the key. Because some of us like to rebuke him, but here's the other part. If he repent, forgive him. If they repent about anything that they've done, you've got to forgive them and let it go. Yes. Now, how many of you know that once we walk in that forgiveness, the enemy always tries to make us go back to the memories as if it was yesterday. Yes. And what we do instead of casting down that memory, like the Bible says, cast down the imaginations, we allow that to execute us to go against the faith that the Lord is telling us to walk in. So listen to what he says. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. So listen, that's a lot of forgiveness. 
I don't know if y'all see this. Seven times seven equals what? Forty-nine. Forty-nine. Yeah. So when your children are cutting up, we're gonna keep it on children, because some of y'all can tell here it won't be real. Y'all, y'all got these little masks on today. Y'all ain't ready to be transparent. Well, you know what? I don't pastor here, so I'm in the house to get what the Lord has given. So I'm telling you, you better be naked and not ashamed, because the Lord might read your mail. Because he's told you today he's trying to elevate you and execute your faith. Amen? So listen, listen. Seven times seven. That's like if you do something to me, brother, and you come at nine o'clock and ask me to forgive you, I gotta forgive you. You do the same thing again at 10, 15 and ask me to forgive you, I gotta forgive you. Now come on, let's keep it real. One time I'm good, two times I might be good, but the third time, I got a problem. <laughs> Cause it's been less than two hours and you asking me to forgive you for the same thing? Come on, come on, keep it real. How many of us, you know, we're like, they're like, God, 40, 49 times y'all. <laughs> There's only 24 hours in a day. So he said, wait, they cutting up, that's like your children. If you even multiply that, you know, 25 times two, that's like 48. So two times in an hour, that's forgiveness. I want you to see this really plain, right? So they're telling them, so listen how the apostles answer. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. See how powerful that faith is? It wasn't just, okay, increase our faith to do this. God, we need you to increase our faith to forgive. And God was saying, in this house, the action, the people that God is about to send to faith and action, you better get ready to walk in forgiveness and love, because he's not sending the church in faith and action. He's sending the other church. When the pimp come in this house, you better get ready to execute forgiveness and exercise your faith. When the drug addict that is still struggling walks up in faith and action, you better get ready to execute your faith. When the liar gets ready and the adulterer gets ready to walk up the 
environment and the atmosphere. How many of you know that when the atmosphere is right, you feel a little bit more comfortable? Yes. Yes. It's like walking in somebody's house and it's like, oh, I don't know if I can sit in here. I don't know if I'm going to eat here, right? Come on, can we eat a real heavy bit that way? But then when you walk it in, it's like, oh, come on, take off your shoes. You're like, oh, I don't want to. And they're like, come on, it's okay. Take off your shoes, eat wherever. You kind of be like, oh, I can do this, right? I can do this. And then they're like, oh, come on, eat. No, eat whatever you want. And you know you're hungry. You're sitting there lying, taking like a half ounce of meat, a half ounce. But I just want it. And they're like, no, we were, no, you really don't want me to be real because I might eat all your food. And they're like, no, I really, really want you to be real. And then there's another couple of videos where you're like, well, man, they got a lot of food. I can eat three plates. You say be real. Here I am. I'm about to go three plates. And then when it's good, well, man, can I do a little bit more? Am I talking real to somebody in here today? What that shows is when the atmosphere and the environment is right, we allow people to trust us and to walk in who God has called them to be, and we're able to feed them. And so Jesus is saying, I need you so much to be. So now when they start talking and telling you their issues, you can't shift on them. When they're sitting at your, at your table and maybe say, hey, you know what? I, I just came out of prison six months ago. You can't now shift and be like, can you take the kids upstairs? <laughs> just, you know, just do it real. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> it's okay. Come on, come kick share. It was loud. Everybody was And now it's like, doom, doom, doom. Everybody's gone. You can't do that, right? You've got to trust the Lord. Right. Now, I'm not saying be ignorant. Right? I'm not saying not to be wise, but I'm saying you've got to know how to minister to people. You've got to know how to walk in that love. You've got to know how to show them love and kindness. Because if you think about where you have come from, come on, if people really knew our story, they might be doing some of it, if not worse. But God, anybody can say, but God, come on, let's put our hands together. So God began to show me how that increase of faith looked. And I said, okay, God, I, I got this. You know, it's good. Uh, you were talking about the forgiveness. You're telling them the increase of faith. You use the servant as a comparison. He says, okay, that ain't good enough. Let's go back a couple of chapters. So let's go to Mark. We're going to go to Mark chapter 11. Is this blessing someone today? Yes. Amen. Mark chapter 11. And we're going to go from verse 23 to 25. Tell somebody, elevate and execute your faith. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. I want to stop right there. Because as the Lord is taking faith and action to the next level, you cannot be the people that are sitting here doubting when your generals give orders. That's right. That's true. That's true. That's true. You're not going to see at the level that they see. You know, well, I don't see what pastors see. I just don't understand that they are always seeing these great things and these big visions. Come on, don't act. Don't act like it's not up in here. Don't sit here faking like, oh, we just totally we never question anything. You're lying. The truth ain't in you. <laughs> can I get some real folks? They can't see you, but can I get some real folks to say ouch or amen? Yeah. All right. Because I know it's up in here. <laughs> well, I, I just, and it doesn't mean that you don't love. That's not what I'm saying. But God did show me some of you don't understand the execution of the orders you're about to march. Because what you don't know is God has been getting them prepared for something and it's not yet time for the launching. He wanted you to get ready for the execution and elevation so when they drop it like it's hot, you can get ready to launch. You can't have faith and be like, Pastor, we believe you. Woo, we with you because we do that on Sunday morning. Then we get home Sunday night, what was Pastor them talking about? I don't see it. I don't know it. I don't understand. It ain't for you to understand. And it ain't for you to always see it. And you know how I know proof? God don't tell us everything. Because if he had told us the whole story, some of us would be running like the guns were shooting. Bam, bam, bam. Right? Well, maybe not y'all. But if God had told me that I'd be doing what I'd be doing today, oh, I think I would have 
been in the Olympics running that 100 yard dash faster than Flo Jo. But he does it. He's a God that he prepares us. And God loves us and he stands. When you do it, you can't do it with doubt. And you know what we don't do? Well, we don't understand. We don't go to our leaders and say, Pastor, I'm with you. But I really don't understand. Can you at least give me a little bit more? Because guess what? God will prepare them to share who needs to know it. But you've got to have a heart that I want to know. And not that I want to know so that I can go against and defeat. So what God is saying is, as I'm elevating your faith, I need there not to be any doubt in this house. I need there to be one sound, one voice, and one action. Amen? Amen. So listen to what he says now. Therefore I say unto you, whatever things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. And the reason why I'm not really kind of going out of context, I don't want y'all to think that, oh, well, whatever I say, I got that kind of power. The Lord's going to give it to me. Because I got to take you back to saying he will never have you pray the desires of your heart that are not in sync with his. So if you pray for somebody's husband and ain't yours, that word don't apply. If you pray for somebody's job that ain't yours, that don't apply. If you pray for some money that ain't yours and that don't apply to the word, that is not yours. But if you are praying for a job that is in sync, that God will get the glory. And when he gives you the job, you won't stop praying hard. You won't stop coming to church. You won't stop serving. God will then grant you the desires of your heart. But if the desires of your heart don't line up with his word, he will say no. So some of y'all are like, well, God, I've been praying you an answer. Your prayers have not been in line with his. So God said today to some of you, you need to change the way that you pray. Right, right, right. And some of your prayers need to stop being so self-centered. Yes. Some of your prayers need to be for others. Yes. Yes. Because if we're praying for other people, God will allow other people to begin to intercede on our behalf. Yes. That's how this thing works. You know, every part of the armor is covered but our back because we are supposed to have one another's back. And the enemy knows that. That's why when we're not praying and we're not covering, the enemy is allowing us to stab. It don't come straight in the heart. What hurts in the heart is when it has come from the back and penetrated to the heart. That's why we got the breastplate of righteousness. But if, if you think about the movie 300, they get in a circle because they cover one another's back. God is saying in this house, it's time for faith and action to start covering. He says, and when ye stand praying, yes. so this one really messed me up. Because you know, growing up, I always thought the posture alone for strong prayer was on your knees, right? And I'm not saying on your knees is wrong. <laughs> but in this situation, the way that the Lord was applying, he says, when you have to go against giants, yes. you can't be on your knees. Yes. Individual prayers when you get on your knees because that's you and the Lord and that humility. But when we've got to fight against what God has given us, we've got to stand armored and begin to pray. God says he's calling this house to a deeper level of prayer where you're going to stand with one another. Arm in arm, hand in hand, house in house, intertwined. He says, and when ye stand praying, what's that word again? Forgive. I said, God, why are you having me deal with so much about forgiveness? Because he said, many of the people in faith and action have unresolved issues and they've not truly yet forgiven and letting go. And if there's bitterness and unforgiveness and you keep talking about the hurt over and over and over again, I cannot elevate. Because if there's one weak link, it affects where God is trying to take. So today he said, it's time to forgive. F and F, forgive and fast forward. He says, forgive. 
if ye have ought against any that your father also which is in heaven may forgive ye your trespasses here's the thing he said faith in action but if you do not forgive neither will your father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses so I said, okay, God, after I take me, he says, then take them back to where I said, I love the Lord and how he just gives us a direction. So we're going to go back to 2 Thessalonians. And now we come back into Paul. Paul is talking to the church. And now in verse 2, he says, grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of your elevation, of, of going from non-forgiveness to forgiveness, from doubt to no doubt, from anxiety to freeness. The Lord says, now I can release grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Look, he said, you don't just get God, yeah. but you get God and Jesus. Yeah. That's powerful. You get both of them. He says, we're both going to give you grace. Listen, because of your faith, listen to this, because of you walking in the word, because of you obeying, he says, we are bound to thank God always for you. I don't know if you see this. Bound means there is an obligation. When you and I are obeying the word, we have an obligation. The Lord has an obligation to be thankful for children who are obedient. So what is God saying to us? He says, because that your faith growing exceedingly. But this is the part that I love. Why is your faith growing exceedingly? And the charity of every one of you all toward each other abounded. Do you know what charity is? It's not like we think a charity case. Charity is love. Because the love of God is so seen in such an elevated and execution way, I can't help but this house. Yes. You want a packed house and you want to meet the needs and you want God to do great things, right. then let's start flowing in love, yes. faith and action. Yes. Right. Yes. And I'm talking about unconditional love. And you know what unconditional love looks like? Loving those who ain't easy to love. That's right. Some of y'all like, oh Jesus, why'd you bring Sister Hot Dog here? <laughs> Can they go to another church? They just a hellion. The Lord wouldn't have brought a hellion in the house if you didn't have what it was needed. Yes. You need to just walk in love. You know why? Because you was once a hellion. Yes. Oh, some of y'all can't deal with this. And you know what? We need to start looking at ministry out of ourselves. Yes. Out of our own situations and out of our own conditions. We've got to minister out of the fresh oil of the Lord. And I'm telling you, you know when you do get on your knees, when you fight it extremely hard, that's why the apostle said, increase our faith. Because you've got to love seven times seven. And one day, he said, yes. not one year, not one month. So don't y'all be like, well, I did it for a whole month, Pastor Seandra said it. The devil is a liar. He said daily seven times seven, 49 times a day. When I started to do that math, oh, my God, that's like hundreds of thousands times in a month. And you know why he challenges us? Because how many of us have come to the altar over and over again asking the Lord to forgive us? And we went back and picked up the same thing that we said we laid down on the altar. Come on, put your hands together. You know that's you. And God said, in the same way that I extended that, I want you to do it. You know why? This is what I want to continue to read on. Look at this. Now we're going to go to four. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your persecution and tribulations that she endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. That's just a token of the glory. So why is God telling you to do this? Because he's ready to pour greater glory in this house. Today he called me and said on 924-17, I want you to prophesy to them and to let them know I'm calling them to a greater level of glory. And I am about, you watch, in the next 30 days we talk, she's going to tell me how God has started sending people with situations and issues and they're coming in this house. And God says, how you treat that little shows how much the increase is coming. Are y'all ready for increase in this house? Come on, are you really ready for increase in this house? Are you really ready for increase in this house? Then it's time to elevate and execute and to do what? Run.
Listen to this. It's a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. So I wanted to save all of that to build you up to let you know that yes, you're going to suffer some. Come on. How many of y'all like suffering? For real, for real. Keep it honest. I'm glad you, I thought, you know, you didn't put your hand. I was going to use you as an example. You say, oh no, let me go back to rubbing my nose. <laughs> Like, dude, that 
see my retirement fight. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I don't like fighting, but you know, I'd be like, oh, it's hype. You know, I sit with my husband, yeah, get him, baby. It just happened. <laughs> but here's the rock. Rock. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. You ain't got to cover your mouth. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Let it lose. Be all things to do that again for me, brother. Rock. Yeah, and I like the way he do it. See, that's what God is trying to do. Because everybody ain't going to be quiet and cute in here. Yes, yes, yes. Right. yes. You got some bang, bang, shoot em ups coming. And if y'all just sitting there all timid, they ain't going to want to be here. You got to learn to be transitional. Yeah. Sometimes it's hallelujah, but sometimes it's Y'all ready for the rock? Rock! rock. Yeah! I'm about to have you come sit up here and preach. Man, you know when you got people that are energized and ready, it like pushes something on you. All right, so here's the R. How are you going to do this? Pastor, how am I going to elevate and execute? By rock. Here's the R. Radical. Yes. Radical. Yes. God is saying faith in action. It's time to be radical. Yes. What do I mean by radical? It's time for you to start doing some extraordinary things in the kingdom of God. I'm talking about extraordinary. Where what people don't think is the normal, like people getting slain in the spirit, people coming up in here with demons and getting set free, people coming in here with dead situations and being given life. That's extraordinary, but it's ordinary to our extraordinary God. You know why the church has lost its power? We've got timid, and now we go to church where it's 60 minutes and we done. And if God called you that and you watch it, cool, that's you. But I deal with deliverance. I deal with the fullness of the act of apostle. And if it takes two hours to get the people set free, bring it on, bang, bang, do it. A football game lasted more than two hours. How dare we put God in a box and in a time and get mad with the preacher. Preacher walking in 45 minutes. Sometimes you need more because your issues is deep and the surgery. Folks was gonna reject him. 
That's why John was like, no, I don't want to go. I am not going to them people because I know what they're going to say. God said, okay, you know what? You ain't going. I got something for you. I'm about to swallow you in the belly of this whale. And some of us talk about that, but I looked at a video. Look at this. And I know some of y'all watch, you know, that, that movie about what the hell. So just imagine how gross this is. You're sitting in the belly of a nasty whale with pus and animals and nastiness and succubus and worms and old food and boo-boo and all of that. Y'all got to create the picture so you can see it. That's how some of you have been in your situations where you've been like, God, why am I sitting in waste? He said, because you wouldn't do what I told you to do. So I've got to let you sit in it. So that when I do spill you out, you'll open your mouth and finally do what I told you to do. I knew y'all wasn't gonna like that one, but I don't care. Put your hands together and praise him anyway. Okay, so let me take you out of that. So you don't think so? Well, let's think about Ananias. Y'all know Saul, the story of Saul, he was persecuting the Christians. Okay, I'm not gonna use no today's time because then I might, you know, well, in my name, I'll be like, yeah, I don't like him. Like, no, nah, I don't like her. So, imagine God telling you, here is the mass murderer. And you got to open up your house and let the murderer come spend the night there. I'm sure y'all come looking, yeah. You know you lie. You'd be like, Jesus, have you missed the mark? Right? Extraordinary. But God knew because guess what? Because of him opening up his home and it seemed like something that was so radical yet so subtle, God moved on the heart of Ananias to prove that it was God and he allowed Saul to see that God was really real and his role to Damascus experience was for naught. And that's why Paul wrote two thirds of the New Testament. So that's the R, radical. Say wrong. Wrong. Here's the A. Action. Faith in action. What's the action? God says, I've placed an expectation for you to do what I've called you to do. I have an expectation for you act upon the mission and the vision that I'm giving your generals. There are things that God is changing that's placing in your heart. 2018 is about to be a new beginning and a shift in this ministry like never before. And God says, I need you to get ready. I need you to be armed up and I need you to be activated in action. You're not going to understand it. It's going to seem crazy. You're going to say, God, how are we doing this? We don't have the finances. We don't have the resources. God says, shut your mouth. Set your face like a flint. Be steadfast and immovable and just do the doggone thing. Action is what separates, listen to this, the mundane Christian from the devoted Christian. The question becomes, do we believe in God enough that it changes the way we act and the way we do? Or do we not really believe in God and we're like the linking verb? The linking verb just sits there and links. But God says, your name is called faith in action. There is no subject to the name of your church. Why? Because the action begins with you. You understood. You understand now. You have no more excuses. He sent me here for today to take away the you is you. It's you. It's you. It's you. You be faith in action. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. In the book of James, James is telling that even demons believe in God. So if demons believe in God, how much more us as disciples? You know, I don't like to use just the term Christians because that's become so linked. You know, where people are like, oh, that's Christ-like. But there's a depth of discipleship. Disciples mean I go. I have a commission. God said to the disciples, it is time for you to execute, elevate your faith in action and rock. So he's calling you to be radical. He's calling you to walk in action. And when God blows up faith in action, he says, here's the H. Remain humble. Remain humble. God is going to move and do a mighty work. And he's about to show up and blow up. He's about to blow up. And God said, don't you get the big head. Don't you stop doing what you're doing. Don't you change the foundation of what God is giving you. You might have to extend your resources. And let me tell you this and serve notice. When the church gets big enough, don't be tripping because the pastor can't respond to you the way that they used to. Oh, say amen. 